In today's video, we're gonna go over some creepy TikTok conspiracies. Let's get into it. At first I thought maybe it was a bear or maybe a mountain lion. I guess at the end of the video it kind of looks like a dog. I'm assuming that it was this person's dog and it was just a creepy moment that they decided to record. But if not, that's still terrifying even if it's not a bear. That's a pretty good sized dog. Look what this guy found on the beach, y'all. What is this? It's not a toy. What is this, y'all? Oh my goodness, y'all. Y'all, what is this? What is this? I've never seen this before in my life. Does anybody know what that is? Is that like a snorkel so it can breathe? Oh my God. Why is it in the sand? Doesn't that belong in the ocean? I don't know. I've never seen one of those in person. A lot of people are saying that it's a cuttlefish. I googled what a cuttlefish looks like and it's pretty accurate to what a cuttlefish looks like. That's a big one if that's the case. It's a very disturbing looking creature. Technically harmless for the most part other than their beak. I also wonder what it was doing in the sand like that. Nonetheless, it's an extremely wild looking creature. I don't think I'd feel comfortable touching one. It's called the paw bearing ritual. There was this game, right? Yeah. In Vietnam, where kids used to play this. Yeah. So this is what, this is the ritual. There's one person that lays down, right? Mm -hmm. Covers his face or her face with a towel, yeah. right? Everybody puts two index fingers on like a part of the limbs, right? While they're laying down. Mm -hmm. And the guy at the head asks the person to the right, what are you doing? And the guy answers, I'm Paul bearing. And every way it goes around, I'm Paul bearing, I'm Paul bearing, right? And mm -hmm. once everyone says that, they lift it up with their index fingers, the whole body lifts up. Oh shit. And you know why this happens? Why? When the person covers the face, yeah. it's to trick the ghosts that they're carrying a dead body to the grave. Oh, what the? <laughs> so, so the, the ghosts help which is why the, the lift is possible. Yo. That's why the, that's why it lifts so easy cuz ghosts are helping them. Oh, because they think it's dead. They think it's dead cuz the 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 face is covered. Damn, yeah. that's dark. But have you ever played this game like has it ever been done to you? I never I never did Good, it. Cuz you're not supposed to play cuz ghosts will stay with you. The person who who covered the face. Oh shit, what so, the fuck? That's why you're never supposed to play it. So so it's it's like getting cursed. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The person who laid down cuz fam, you're, you they think you're dead so they're going to stay with you for Man I always find it extremely interesting on how people come up with these games. Is it from watching TV, movies, reading books? Where do they come up with the inspiration and the ideas and the stories behind it to come up with these games? I don't know. I don't think that I would ever do anything like this. It's kind of silly to me and I don't really necessarily believe that there's a paranormal aspect to it. But why risk it? Did anybody hear what the Vatican is preparing guidelines for? I mean, it is really sketchy, people. The Vatican is preparing guidelines for apparitions and other supernatural phenomena. I literally can't make this shit up. Look at this. The Vatican is preparing to release a document giving guidance on how to discern supernatural phenomena. As you can see, the Holy See Press Office announced the upcoming document will be published May 17th, saying that this doctrine of faith is in the process of finalizing a new text with clear guidelines and norms for the discernment of apparitions and other phenomena saying that an apparition refers to an instance in which a divine entity, such as a saint, the Virgin Mary, or Christ himself, makes itself known to a person on earth. What the fuck? And the Catholic Church is supposedly urging extreme prudence before ascribing phenomena to a supernatural force, warning that being too quick to attribute divine origin to explainable occurrences can damage the faith and warp belief. What the fuck? Last month, the Vatican also released a document providing guidance on the place of human dignity in the modern age. And the document also denounced gender theory, gender transitions, and surrogate pregnancies as violating basic moral precepts. 
Once again, you cannot make this shit up. Does this not sound like Project Bluebeam to anybody else? And I know, oh my god, I sound like a crazy person, right? A conspiracy theorist, right? Kind of ironic how anybody's even considered a conspiracy theorist anymore. Especially when you consider the fact that it took our own government over a hundred years to admit that in quotations aliens are real. Does anybody even know what extraterrestrials are? Or how many different species of them actually exist in the first place? People really need to get in touch with reality, man, because god. But I don't know, man. Something about this just does not feel right. And I'm really curious as to what everybody thinks about this. I mean, is this not sketchy to anybody? Uh, man, sorry, my nose is like really running. I think I'm sick. I have been seeing this guideline popping up for the past couple of days, so I decided to just go ahead and save this clip so that I could play it and, you know, give my overall opinion and thoughts about this. To me, this seems like some really crazy sounding stuff. And it also sounds a little suspicious on the Vatican's part. Because what I hear and what my brain puts together when I hear things like this, potentially, maybe the second coming of Christ is upon us. And because the Vatican is actually not a good place, they're the bad guys. They're trying to convince us, hey, if we're ever approached by an entity or some kind of being that claims that they are a holy spirit do not necessarily believe them because it could be false that sounds like something that a bad guy would say if the good guys were trying to convince us to win you know only time will tell if we start seeing holy spirits and religious things really happening that's gonna be a really crazy time but yeah when i see these guidelines it makes me wonder does the vatican know that there's something actually about to happen that that's for the good and they want to avert our gaze from it to keep us in the shadows. I don't think you're ready for what I'm about to show you. And that all has to do with that. And I don't care what type of map you use, whether it's a globe or a flat earth map or the old ones. You got to see this. Like I said, I don't care what type of map you use. The bottom line is in all of them, it looks like at some point South America and Antarctica were once connected. And you can see it here, here up there and there. And if you look all the way back to the 1587 Montez map, you can see they did connect. Here's just a little different look from the same map and a closer view from the same map. It's connected. And when you take a closer look on the maps, it almost looks like something blew this out, okay? Like they were connected and something came through and blew that out, right? Well, have you ever gone to look at that area on the satellite imaging? Do you see what I'm seeing here? As in a giant snake's head? Do you see that? And I checked this on multiple sources. At first, I thought maybe it was just CGI that they were imprinting this into the maps. But now I'm starting to think it's really there. It's even in the non-globe satellite imaging. And I don't know about you guys, but it looks like something big blasted through there, and I don't know, maybe knocked itself out and then drowned. And the timing of this couldn't be more impeccable because just yesterday, I posted how this terrain here that looks just like a snake is 10 miles long. Literally from head to tail was 10 miles long in Mexico. Did something massive back in the day before the flood when there was a lot more oxygen from the giant trees that were here smash through that? Because it sure looks an awful lot like it to me. And of course, all this is for entertainment purposes. I'm a satire account. You guys know I just think that's just land formations. Yeah, entertainment purposes only. You know, a lot of people really do not like this creator. His username is Bittest Flat Earther. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. He's got some really silly content out there that's really reaching hard. But then he's got some that's, okay, I can understand and see where he's coming from. And this is kind of one of those videos where, yeah, I see the snake head that he's talking about. That was a really good call. And I see the land formations that look like something plowed through it. And that so happens to look like a giant snake head. And the reason why I personally like these videos is because it, it, it gets me thinking, it gets me, it allows me to theorize and just 
have fun, you know, and think about other things that could be a possibility. And when I see that giant snake, it reminds me of the world serpent. And who knows, if that really is a giant snake head, who's to say it's not either the Leviathan or a world serpent? It's a titan from the past, and it's just lying dormant waiting to be reawakened. I'll have to give it to this guy. That was a really cool find to see on Google Earth. The video I'm about to show you is genuinely a one of the most convincing and terrifying video footage evidence I've seen of a ghost or whatever this is. Check it out. The fourth or fifth time I had watched the video, I noticed something in the corner of the room, which is actually my daughter's room. So I screenshotted it and I just zoomed in on it. My heart just dropped. I could feel my face, all the blood in my face ran. I mean, it just. It scared me. It just looked like somebody watching me. I didn't sleep that night. Here is a nice little screenshot of that in case you missed it. Yeah, that dude saw that in his house. Can you imagine seeing that? I would leave so fast, so fast. You would never ever see me in that house again because that looks like a, like a person with like a dead person. Like, I don't even know, but that looks like a humanoid thing, right? that's upside down like i can't even look at it anymore it freaks me out so bad yeah i'm not gonna lie seeing that would terrify me i don't know if i would like to live in that house if i seen something like that but then again i don't know if i'd be convinced if that was really a ghost or if there's something weird going on there that i need to figure out my, my biggest thing about ghosts and paranormal activity why do they have to be so creepy why can't you just make yourself known pleasantly do you think it's necessary to just creepily peek your head around the corner and think that that's okay that's that's not normal did you do that kind of stuff in your alive time or is there just certain rules as a ghost that you have to follow to remain as a ghost you know like oh well, if you want to live a million years as a ghost you have to be as creepy as possible hey if you haven't done so already go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel i only ask once per video and i make a video like this almost every day and to everyone that's subscribed thank you so much for being subscribed to the channel and to everyone that's not subscribed Thank you for watching. And don't forget, if you want to be a part of questions for DK where I answer personal questions, questions about conspiracy theories or theories in general, leave a comment starting with question for DK so that I can find that in YouTube search results and answer those questions in a future video. And stick around to the end of this video where I answer some of those questions. You know, there's a lot of theories for why the Titanic sunk, but have you ever heard of this one? It's very interesting. So did you know that actually when a new ship is birthed, meaning that it is brought onto the sea and let loose, that they crack a bottle of alcohol on the front of the ship for good luck? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They do it all the time. They do it all the time. But, did you, but you know what's interesting is that the Titanic, when it got birthed, they actually did not crack a bottle of alcohol onto the ship. So people have led to believe that that has been bad luck on the ship from the get-go. But that's not where the theory comes in. So it turns out that most of the, pretty much all of the opposition of the Federal Reserve Act was on the Titanic that same day. And what's interesting is that JP Morgan was also supposed to be scheduled to go on the Titanic, but just before he got, he boarded, he decided to not go. Many people to believe that he got tipped off that the ship was going to be sunk in order to continue with the Federal Reserve Act. If you ask me, that sounds like classic business tactics 101. So <laughs> that's the theory of when the Titanic sunk, actually, and the captain might, would have been in on it as well. Wow. Yeah. Oh, they wiped out the enemy. Yes, they do. Wow. You no, know, you know, before I started doing this, going down the rabbit holes of conspiracies on YouTube, I never once would have thought that the Titanic was a potential conspiracy. Now I'm almost 100% certain that it was some sort of hit to get rid of a number of very important people of that time. And it just makes sense when you put that together that yeah, someone's going to definitely have enough power. Someone's going to want what that other person has. So of course they're going to pay off whoever was responsible for that ship to sink it and make sure nobody could live to tell the tale or at least most of everybody. And that also makes me think that that's still going on today with other situations, plane incidents, other boats, trains, 
Things like that are happening intentionally to get rid of important people. It just, it's something that makes you think a lot. I've known that something weird was going on since like Tuesday-ish because people have just been acting weird, driving weird, like I've been feeling weird. And I even Googled on Tuesday or Wednesday, I don't remember if there was a full moon coming because that's usually what happens, like it's true people act weird. Well, now I know it was because HAARP was doing testing, which basically turned this into us into like, put us in a microwave all weekend. Um, and it made a lot of people sick including me it made like electronics fuck up made my watch like basically fucking burn me like there's literally i have like it's like peeling it's never done that i've had it for two years um i just went to go buy some uh something from the dollar store and the total is 427 i paid four dollars and thirty cents four singles a quarter and a, a nickel and this lady had to use her calculator to give me three cents back we need to add some aluminum foil to this human microwave because what the f Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. Over the weekend, I also had not been feeling very well. I'm still not 100%. I have this minor headache just lingering on the right side. And it's, it's, it's affecting my sinuses and everything. It's like I'm experiencing allergy season all over again. And it just makes me wonder if it has something to do with that aurora, you know? If that aurora was really a natural phenomenon or if it was something that was man-made and that's why a lot of people are starting to feel a little off and not well because it wasn't a natural event we're seeing these types of videos on tiktok it has me questioning a little bit what do you guys think about this have you guys been experiencing any kind of illness after the aurora have you noticed anything different about people let me know in the comments because i think that things have changed a little bit since Y'all, is this real? You're gonna say no, it's not real. Look at this dude's foot. Little Wayne is literally a goat. Now hold on, let's back up for a minute. Let's zoom really close in to his feet. Yeah, that's really weird, right? The only way this is possible is if his feet are split down the middle like that. Otherwise, that would not work. I also referenced many other pictures of Lil Wayne in his shoes to see what size he wore. To see, that's his normal size. So please tell me what's happening in Lil Wayne's shoe. Is he really the GOAT? Before you say AI or Photoshop, I gotcha. I did photo forensics to find out that no, these pictures were not altered from their original state. Not by CGI or Photoshop. It must be AI then, right? No, this is a legitimate picture of Lil Wayne and his feet. Yo, what is going on right now? Isn't Lil Wayne the first one who started talking about he's the goat? It's really not far-fetched considering the Bible addresses these half-goat, half-human things. And the satire shall dance there. Satire. And with the Hebrew we get sair. A satire may refer to a demon-possessed goat like the swine. Hairy, masculine, noun. They're also addressed in a different portion of Isaiah with dragons, which by the bones and dinosaur bones, we knew the dragons were real. Christopher Columbus said dragons were real. Ancient Russia says dragons are real. The Bible also calls them devils. Little hairy devils. And I'm really sure that Lil Wayne was the first person to come out to say that he was the goat. The hooves don't lie. He's only told you a hundred times, I'm not a human being. How about the fact that Lil Wayne came out of nowhere and was a child at the house of Birdman who was somehow in charge of him? Maybe some kind of faunish industry puppet? Look, y'all need to stop. It's right freaking there and I showed you it's real. I have a couple of questions about those shoes. One, those look extremely uncomfortable if you do not have split feet. How do you wear those if you're just wearing those as a fashion design? That's gotta be miserable. And two, where do you even get shoes like that? Do those have to be custom made? Or is there just stores where, yeah, I want to go buy goat shoes? I mean, I know there's the internet, and I'm sure you can just find them somewhere online, but still, like, that's a crazy purchase. And a crazy shoe to make as well. It makes me wonder, is it really split like it appears to be, or is it maybe just 
formed that way and once it reaches a certain level it's just a normal shoe that looks like it's split i would really like to see how these wear because they're odd looking shoes i'm, I'm not necessarily a hater of the shoes i just want to know how do they work let me know in the comments what you guys think about this do you guys think that little wayne is the goat i came across a story that was insane it's about events that happened in the years 1811 and 1812 but in March 1811, something appears in the sky, which was called the Great Comet. So after it got super close to the Earth on October of 1811, two months later in December, December 16th, 1811, there was massive earthquakes huh. that happened in the New Madrid fault line. The earthquakes that happened were, they said, on record, the worst earthquakes America's ever experienced. Wow. They said the bells in like Boston were ringing for like a week straight. I just thought it was crazy, man. I've never heard this story ever. The biggest earthquakes America has ever seen, the longest duration of earthquakes the world has ever seen. But what was crazy about this great comet thing, this orbit or the orbit of this great comet happens every 3,065 years. So the last time people on Earth saw this comet was during the time of King Ramses II in Egypt. But that was also the time of Moses, which I found super Shut interesting. Up. Yeah. <gasps> Like I'm thinking of like the plagues, the plagues, the sky going dark. And I don't know. It was, I just thought that was a weird connection. Yeah. I came across. The following footage is captured by a family who were out fishing with their kids. They were just having some family time, but it's not what they were doing that has set the internet ablaze. It's in the background, specifically the sky after the father casts his fishing line. Take a look. This is why. So many conspiracy theorists are out there talking about the matrix glitches. It's because when we see evidence like this, it makes you question what's really going on. Take a look at this footage and tell me what you think. Man, that was just some kind of aperture autocorrect on whatever camera that they were using. I don't believe that that was a glitch. I could be wrong. I'm fairly certain that that was an aperture effect on whatever camera that they were using. Today the Earth is going through what some scientists are calling solar bukkake. Our heaving ionosphere is being penetrated relentlessly by thick, viscous waves of solar radiation. And what that means for you is that for the next few days, things are going to feel a little effed up. The science is clear. Solar activity like this can cause psychological and physiological issues as well as societal turmoil. You might see bouts of anxiety, paranoia, sleep disturbances, and irrational anger. And people are going to drive even more like crap than they already do. Basically, it's just going to exacerbate the idiots and annoy the rest of us. So one way to protect yourself is if you've got a halo pulsar, put it on to 7.8 or 10 hertz. And if you're especially sensitive, you can try vitamin B3, niacinamide, at 2,000 milligrams a day, and that should help with sleep and even you out. Just remember that solar activity like this riles people up because it affects their nervous system like an outside threat. So take it all with a grain of salt, keep your head down, and just take care of yourself. Well, that's good to know. If anyone's out there experiencing any of these problems, it's probably just due to this solar event. I'm still on the lines of thinking that it's a man-made solar event, probably by Harp or something. But it's still within the realm of possibility that this is a natural event and there is actual proper precautions to take for ourselves. The 11 mile drive ritual. I seen a man do it on YouTube. Yeah. And he said this drive was kind of like him selling his soul. Why? All you need for this ritual is your car. The whole goal of it is by the 11th mile, you should be able to close your eyes and desire anything you want. Yeah. I want a million dollars. You'll get that a million dollars if no you complete way. this. Every mile is different. One, two, three, four, the fifth mile, you'll be good. Like it's just driving. Mm -hmm. On the sixth mile, now that you start daydreaming, the landscape will become different. So the trees will now become like long Whoa. grass. There's two main rules. Rule number one, if you see any creatures on the road, you're not allowed to talk to them or pull over. Number two is you're going to start hearing your family members start talking to you and say oh, stop.
<laughs> on the 10th mile, in complete silence, you're gonna start hearing a guy whisper all the things that you're afraid of. Yeah. And those things will manifest into the car. No. So say you're scared of like clowns. When you turn around, you're it's gonna a see a clown oh my there. God. This is the final stretch though. Yeah. Like you're almost at the 11th. At the 11th, you'll see a stoplight. When the stoplight turns red, you're supposed to close your eyes. You officially sold your thing. Damn. Yeah. Could you imagine if a road like this actually exists and someone's just not even aware of it and they're driving down this road and they're like man i really could use some mcdonald's right about now <laughs> next thing you know they're tripping balls seeing all of their worst fears and at the end of the trip hey at least they got their mcdonald's they've been transferring animals into a computer which they did a monkey 2045.com look it up for the monkeys in the computer his mind is but the body's dead then by 2010 or 2012 they were supposed to have been able to transfer a human consciousness into a robot they've already done that and united states as well darpa has a project called the avatar project and an avatar project they have a symbiotic link from a soldier underneath a mountain somewhere like in a bunker connected to a field robot and it wow. controls it through a mind connection if the robot is destroyed of course the soldier doesn't die and the only thing that stopped us in transferring consciousness from one brain to another was data storage now we have that solved because microsoft just came up with the first dna hard drive that hard drive could store over 433 petabytes of data that's on one gram of dna it's a drop of dna if you think of the earth as hollow then you start to think of how far you can go into the earth you know we're always focused on there we're going to the moon and we're going to mars and all that nonsense that they try to tell us but tv people are going deep into the earth and that's the question is how deep can you go and how many civilizations are deep below us and how many layers are deep below us that's the question we should be asking we're not going to the moon which is a plasma ball that we can't land on and can't get to but we should be asking how many layers are below us right now samir in bosnia is going through all the tunnels underneath the Bosnian pyramid. Layers and layers and layers and layers. So here we are on the surface, and then you're thinking, okay, now there's seven or 10 layers below that are thousands of feet below the pyramids, below the surface level. Who put those there? It takes one thing to build a pyramid. You know, we know how much work it takes to build pyramids. But when you think about it, you sit there and go, okay, you built the pyramid up there, but then who built the layers below? Who built the chambers that are going down below? Were they digging them out with shovel? Sitting with a shovel? I don't think so. That's for sure. Did you ever get inside the actual craft? I was in there for a startup, sure. How do you, how do they image, how do they, how do you look out the windows from one of these things? With Actually, we didn't look out any windows. There weren't any windows. The only place we had any uh, visibility at all, and it was done with, uh, <clears throat> with cameras or video type things at that time. The whole big problem with this, with the, Yes, is that it's so exacting in its design and so forth, and it can't be used, uh, say, with uh, it can't be used as a uh, like we use aircraft today with uh, dropping bombs and and you know having machine guns, you know, in the wings and that kind of stuff. Uh, it's uh, the design is so exacting that you can't add anything. You can't. It's got to be. Got to be just like there's a big problem in the, in the design uh, of where things are put. Uh, say you know that where the center of the aircraft is and that type. Of thing. And then the fact that we raise the three feet so the dollar guys who get in and stuff. <laughs> the actual ship is extended uh, back to its window configuration, but actually but we had a long period of introduction into meeting, you know, say, uh, a Navy video. Okay, I got a download right now because last night I was getting downloads about, I mean, downloads actually make sense now, about how our world is a hologram and that thoughts are just packets of data. Thoughts, download. You press enter on your computer, you're downloading something anyways. But this one is pretty intense and you guys are gonna call me crazy. This is, this is a lot. Okay, so the download I got, I was in the shower and then like it'll start teaching me throughout the day, going to sleep at night in the shower. So it said to me, you think time and space is real and this is how it's not real. They said, you measure the distance between objects and you call that uh, time and space. But it's just, I don't know, 
this, I can't, it's just a 3D image. So, so you're seeing a world that isn't there. Now, hold on, hold on, because if in the future we can project 3D images through a spatial computing goggles, then, and we find out that these eyeballs are already the most advanced form of technology, we can all admit that the body is very intelligent. So it, it's, not, it's not far off that the packets of data we're receiving, and if we download it, we can uh, watch it like a movie. Also totally random, but if you guys follow LMNOPQ, it says you're watching a movie a lot. If you follow, for some reason, there's some random stuff in there and it says you're watching a movie. And also the last word that PQ dropped was um, Ascension. But anyways, so I said, okay, sorry, devil's advocate. What about uh, blind people that feel like they're in a world if it's just a 3D projection? And they said, well, they can't see it, but they're still getting data in your hands and your legs. It, the feeling is also we're connected to a neural network that's feeding us feedback of what things feel like. And I said, well, how do you know all the textures? It said, all the data is known. Looking at my notes, because I wrote it down. It said, all the data is known in the program. This is some technological shit. I know I, I, know I say that, but like, it's really hitting me that this all adds up. Like we could literally be in a uh, technology. And it doesn't make me sad or worried. It's actually really cool for those of you who want to play with the idea because it's very intelligent and it's it's lead, guiding you back to your true self too, which a lot of people don't know that. So the ending is very beautiful. We've been telling each other some dark stuff that's not true and we're moving back towards the real understanding. So does that make sense? I even said, okay, but if I walk over and touch the light over in my bathroom, it takes time. I'm literally experiencing walking over there like the space is real. And they said, yeah, because it's in your program. You believe you're separate. You believe it's going to take me a couple seconds to walk over there. All of this is because you deeply believe it's true. You believe you got to walk over there. It, it sounds so crazy, but like the whole thing is because you believe you're a separate being and you've got to drive in your car to get to far distances. Oh my God, I finally get it. Cause last night I saw an image of them saying, look, if you went this close up to the mo to the TV and you're watching a movie and then they blocked out the sides so that I was fully immersed so that all I could see was the movie. We're in a movie. When she says she gets her downloads, I wonder what that means exactly. When she's thinking and she has an intrusive thought to herself, does she consider that the download? That, if that's the case, I have a lot of downloads all the time. But I see her point. I do not necessarily agree with it because there's still so many other factors that are yet to be answered. For example, it's fine and dandy for a human to understand that they may be in a, a matrix because this reality is like a hologram where they can feel, touch, see, and smell things. They have a thought process. What does that say about other animals like dogs, cats, monkeys, birds, creatures that live off of pure instinct? Are they a part of said simulation or hologram and they just don't exist? Meaning that they do not have a soul or a personality? Or are they also a part of this matrix experiencing this matrix hologram themselves in their own way? I love hearing about it because there's some interesting points, but it's still not enough to convince me. How about you guys? Do any of you believe that we live in a matrix hologram or do you think that this lady might just be a little crazy and might be smoking too much cereal? Alright, so I think it's time for some questions for DK. I know it's been a while. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and answer about eight or nine questions. So let's get started. Question one from Samuel. Hello, hello, I just wanted you to know that the algorithm or other sources have removed my subscription from your channel. I have been watching and know for sure. This is not a question, but I want you to know. Thank you so much, Samuel, for letting me know. This is actually a really good point to bring up. I've read many, many a comments of people saying that they've been unsubscribed from my channel, some of them daily, from what I've read online. If YouTube is automatically unsubscribing a subscriber, it assumes that they could potentially be a bot and, and not a real viewer. And that might be the case that's happening with your channel or on my channel where the viewers are just viewed as bots. And if that's the case, I'm really sorry that that happens. I have had a couple of people in the comments provide potential workarounds to help secure the subscribe. One of the, one of the ways for you to make sure that you're actually subscribed is when you hit the subscribe button, refresh the page, go back and see if it says you're still subscribed. If you're subscribed after you refreshed, it might latch and it might not unsubscribe you. So keep that in mind, that's really the only thing that I have to offer. And again, I'm really sorry for the people that it keeps unsubscribing. But with that being said, I really do appreciate all the effort that you guys do to keep subscribed. Th so thanks for the question, Samuel. That was a really good one. All right, question number two. Question from Jason. Are you Christian? Does it influence your point of view on the conspiratorial things and just the world in general? Because in my mind, if someone ever proclaims that they are 100% true Christian and they believe absolutely every word in the Bible, th then there is no way for them to be scientifically based. Or if you believe in the word of the Bible, then you cannot believe that the world is a globe because it is blatantly stated in Genesis that God built this world, he sat it up on pillars, and he sat the foundation for he did all of this. So if you deny that you live on a flat earth, basically you're a heretic because the Bible says God created the firmament and everything down to the foundations. You can't be an honest to God Christian and have any belief in the fact that we are on a ball spinning around the sun because literally that is the complete opposite of what you are being told the truth is in the Bible. I left a question like this earlier, but I more generalized it as opposed to pointing it directly at you but it's all the same thing if you know what I'm saying or if you get to the point I'm trying to get or if you get the point that I'm trying to get at. You cannot believe what they have told us about the world being a globe and believe in God and creation the way that it is explained to us in the Bible. And it just all comes down to who you want to put your faith in. Those saints that wrote all of those things down and then were collectively put together by other men. Or if you want to believe the scientists who have made the measurements and wrote it all down and wrote papers about it and put it into peer review publication and been accepted as 100% valid. I'm from the South Columbus County, North Carolina to be exact. So in my childhood, I was brought up very, very in church and very Christian. And I know everything that there is to know about the Bible. And I've looked in many religions because I've tried to find what God is myself. Many, many ways and many, many times. And this is the infliction point that I come upon every time where it's you either believe in the measurement of what's right in front of you or you believe in what was told to you by what you believe is your God. It is a highly complex thing to ponder and it will put you in some mental strain. But I so very much look forward to hearing from you about this because I constantly feel alone in the fact that I make this point to people and then they get very aggressive or abrasive with me. People don't like when you have to choose which one is the truth, but it's one or the other. You believe what God said he did or you believe what the scientists say that they measured. I, I remember your other comment. I just recently seen it. This was a better laid out version of that comment. To answer your question if I'm Christian or religious, that will we'll start off there. I am not religious. I do not deny that there may be a God or a creator. And I understand where you're coming from 100%. A lot of people can get extremely aggressive and extremely abrasive about this kind of stuff, especially when it's coming from my, my point of view. Because when I tell someone that I'm still trying to figure it out myself, just like how you said you were, you're on your own journey to figure out what God is to you, I'm kind of doing the same thing with the mindset that religion is not necessarily a full truth and science is not necessarily 
a full truth, especially when we're talking about the Bible, the American English-based Bible. That stuff was translated by some people of science to understand the transcripts and the scrolls and things like that, to be able to properly put these words into the Bible that makes sense to the reader. I don't know if I necessarily believe that the people that put the words into the Bible put the full truth in the Bible. They could have left so much out. They could have also manipulated so much to give us this false understanding and not a real understanding of true religion. And I know that sounds extremely crazy, and I know there's probably some people that are extremely mad because it just don't make sense to them. And it barely makes sense to me. Trust me, I get it. I want to believe in God. I want to believe in a higher power. I just have a hard time believing in books that's been written by humans. That's basically been documented by humans and has been perceived by humans. Everything is an interpretation of what what's happened and not from the divine source themselves, you know? And according to some of these books, whenever we do get some of these divine scripts or scrolls or whatever it is, it's always locked away. It's always untouchable. There's always a reason why it's just out of our grasp. I will be a believer in the creator when the creator makes themselves more known to me. And and If this creator is an all-knowing being, this being would know what to do for me to make me 100% a believer. It can cause some mental strain. For me, it's never bothered me. It's never sent me into a spiral to where I was having bad anxiety or anything like that. I know some people that will spiral thinking about this kind of stuff and it scares them. To me... It does not scare me at all. It honestly excites me. I get extremely excited about this topic because I want to witness these holy events. I want to witness these spiritual beings that are just mind blowing. Like, I want that to be a reality. But I have personally never seen anything like that. So it makes it hard for me to believe it because now it just sounds like a story that I've read from many other books of fantasy and fiction. So Jason, really good question, really hard question to answer because there's so many curves to it, but I hope I answered it the best that I could. Thanks for the question, it was a really good one. Question number three, question from Tina. When are you going to do an episode where you answer questions? I am now. Question number four, question from Tempest Gray. Have you ever had an alien encounter? That's a really good question because it it depends on what you mean by an alien encounter. When you mean an alien encounter, are you talking about me seeing an actual alien or like a UFO sighting? I'll answer all those questions to hopefully fit into what this question was about. To answer your question, if I've ever had an alien encounter where an alien, a physical alien, not a UFO, not a USO, an actual alien has ever approached me or I've encountered something that was like, oh, that might have been an alien over there diving in the dumpster. No, I've never, ever, ever have I ever had an encounter like that. Now, have I had UFO encounters, whether they were alien or not? Yes. And I've had some pretty wild UFO encounters. This was like right as I got my permit to drive. And I had a few friends that were going out late, late, late at night. They were going to some train track because there's supposed to be some ghost train that you can see cross the tracks at night. You can see a ghost light. The whole scary story behind it. They're like, hey, do you want to go and see if we can't spot this ghost train like okay yeah sure why not so we're riding almost two hours away from my home in the middle of nowhere we're in this field and we're right by the tracks and apparently this is the spot where people see ghost lights of the train things like that we stood out there almost two o'clock in the morning no lights on the tracks, nothing like that. Well, we decided that we were going to go home, so we got into the vehicle, we left where we were, and as we were getting on the road, my friend said, holy smokes, what is that? And he pointed up at the sky, and man, let me tell you, it was the weirdest, 
thing. If anything, it might have been military tech, but this was massive. When we looked up, we looked up and there was this giant. And when I say giant, I can't tell you exactly how high up in the sky it was, but it looked big enough to be a football field sized craft. And there was four lights just constantly on it and it was slowly rotating and it wasn't triangular it was kind of rectangular it was like a square but a little bit longer again it really reminded me of a football field and when we seen that we all seen it there was like four people we all seen it and when we looked up and we looked at each other real quick in in shock and all and we went to look back it vanished it was gone no sound, no trail, it was just gone. And that was my first really weird UFO experience. And I have a couple of other UFO experiences, one where I experienced one with my wife. So when it comes to an alien encounter, never have personally experienced an alien creature. But when it comes to UFO encounters, I've seen a few. Moments where you wish you had a really good camera because you could have easily have caught one of these with like a cell phone. But in that time frame, we were so shocked, we never even thought about taking our phones out to, to record it or take a picture of it. It was just pure shock and adrenaline. So hopefully that answered your question. Thanks. All right, question number five. Question from Ben Perry. When are you gonna do themed videos? This is a good question, and I've contemplated a number of times whether I wanted to do a themed video. It's very rare when I have someone ask for a themed video. And I'm assuming when you say themed video, let's take for example, Bigfoot. Are you saying like a 30 to 40 minute long video of just Bigfoot conspiracy theory videos? Or what do you mean by theme video exactly? Because when I read themed video, that's what I, that's what I think is you want a whole episode of just one topic, UFOs, Bigfoot, Tartaria, things like that. I am interested in doing that. I do not get requested enough to do that. So I kind of just stick with all the random videos, but I have had a few of these types of comments before. So if anybody's watching this at this point, let me know in the comments if you are interested in a particular themed video. Do you want to watch all Tartaria? Do you want to see all UFO, Bob Lazar stuff? Like what do you want to see? Or do you just like the random mixture of videos that I have? Which, which honestly, that's my preferred way of doing these videos. But I'm also down for attempting to do a, a themed video or two. Thanks for the question, Ben. Question six. Question from Christine Blair. Question for DK. Tell us the story behind your night. I'd like to see a frontal view if possible. Thanks. Hey, thanks for the question. My knight, his name is Henry. We like to call him Sir Henry the Knight. He is an object that was given to me by my grandmother before she passed away quite a few years ago now. And uh, yeah, he's just a really cool statue that I really enjoy. A lot of people really enjoy the way he looks. He's not uncommon. There is a lot of these little statues around. I've seen them. They're much smaller. He's six foot one. And I've seen a lot of them. They're, they're like three to four foot. He's by far one of the taller ones that I've seen. He's just an object that was given to me by my grandmother. And I, I really like him. He's just a really cool set piece. And he is metal and extremely sharp. I've cut my hands on his shield and sword a couple of times already. Thanks for the question. Question number seven. Question from Linda Jennings. Question for DK. I don't believe in demons or luck, be it good, bad, or otherwise. I don't want to give my power away to man-made ideas that take me out of my own power and have me give that energy to the dark side of thinking. Do you believe in demons and luck? Great question. I think a lot of people would think that the word demon means that it's some kind of evil creature from the Bible. And that might be the case. But for me, I do have suspicion that quote unquote demons exist. And I'm not necessarily saying that they're a part of the religious realm. I'm saying that what we classify as demons, these creatures, 
are probably creatures from another realm that we have not discovered because we have not discovered. But in reality, they could potentially just be a creature from a different realm that sometimes bleeds into our reality and we classify it as a unholy creature. I tend to like to think about demons in that way. And as far as luck goes, that's something that I'm still trying to figure out myself. I do like to believe that luck, bad luck, paying it forward, things like that. I do like to believe that that does have some sort of weight to it. If I, if I do something good for a person, something good may happen for me. And or if I do something really crappy, it might come back to bite me in the butt. I do kind of believe that, but there's a side of me that does not want to believe that. But I like to think that it's a thing. Thanks for the question. Question 8. Question from Chris Broom. What is the link between iPhones and Project Bluebeam? Why do iPhone cameras capture images that Androids don't? iPhones make up over 50% of smartphone users. I personally also have thought about this question in a way. It does make me question if there's something going on with cell phones in general, not necessarily just iPhone, because Android was caught doing something kind of similar with the moon, where if you took a picture of a, a circular white object, it would consider it to be a moon, and it would put a fake image of the moon on that object. Samsung and Android devices were doing that. I don't know if they still are, but it, but it makes me wonder, for an example, like the Aurora Borealis that we just had, I could step outside, it was a black sky. But there was people in my area taking pictures of this guy getting the images of the Aurora. And a lot of them were iPhone users. Some of them were Sony camera users. And some of them were Android users. But when I took a picture, I didn't get nothing. When my wife took a picture, she didn't get anything. And I have a couple of theories behind this. One, my phone is outdated. It is almost at its stock version when I purchased this, and this is the iPhone 11. So it's held its same version of iOS since I purchased it. And the same goes for my wife. And it makes me wonder, the, the people that were capturing these images, did they have updated devices? And on those updated devices, was it adding false images just like how Android was doing with the moon? It leads me to believe that there's an organization out there, maybe, maybe it be a government or what have you, they're trying to manipulate what we see on digital devices so that they fool us into thinking what we see is real. Even though we walked out there and there was nothing in the sky for us, when people took pictures of it with their phone, it was there, and they believed it to be an actual aurora. Now, some people are thinking that it was maybe harp, and it was radio waves, but a lot of people said, oh, well, it, my phone picked it up, I just couldn't see it with my natural eyes. What if the government was to come out and say, well, we can't see aliens, but if you, if you use your phone, you'll be able to see them. And when we use our phone, it's just program in our phone, and we're not really seeing real things. We're just seeing what the government wants us to see. And that would lead into the Project Bluebeam. But the only problem I have with that particular theory is what would be the purpose in it? Just because we could see it with our phone, what good does that do, you know? Hopefully that answered your question. I know that was a really long rambly rant, but there is no real good way for me to answer this question, but I definitely gave you some of my theories about it. Qu question 9. Question from Bloodborne again. Hey brother, start reading some scripture and start praying to God to reveal himself to you and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and all of those conspiracy theories and all of those UFOs will start making sense. Satan is the prince of the power of the air. That's why we're seeing inexplicable stuff in our airspace and it's because it's not physical but it's spiritual. Repent of your sins to your holy maker and you will be forgiven. Jesus said you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. So I guess my question is, what is the truth? That's a good question. And to sum up that question, I don't know what the truth is. I'm still trying to figure it out. Whether I read the Bible, read scriptures or not, it's going to make me question it even more. Because I've tried that. And there's definitely some things that can align with scriptures to conspiracy theories, UFOs, 
other things like that. So if I ever figure out what the truth is, I'll let you know. It's probably going to be a long journey before I find that out. Thanks for the question. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end this video here. I hope you enjoyed the questions that I had. I'm sorry that they were really long and rambly. But, but as always, if you enjoyed any of the clips that we played today, links are in the description down below. And with that being said, have a good day.